All right, guys, we're to, on to the oil cooler and um, oil filter housing. So, I'll make sure you get it clean. So this, this and this, which is your pressure relief, goes in here. Now, you don't have to replace this every time. I do recommend replacing the spring, um, unless you have a way of testing the spring. It's easy to replace, they're not that expensive. Um, as long as this isn't scored up and the bore inside of your oil filter housing isn't scored up, you can reuse that stuff. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape, so we're gonna reuse it. Now, um, this spring, I like I know uh, I had this engine running and it had good oil pressure, even though it had cast rod and failure. So we're going to reuse that. Is the bypass valve. So the bypass valve goes right here. And this is gonna be in there. I already pried it out. You can just pry it out with a screwdriver, it's real easy. Now, I would re recommend replacing uh, this anytime you have this housing off, um, especially if you happen to have had low oil pressure, but really wasn't anything wrong with the engine. Um, and I always replace them with Cummins ones. And they're real easy to reinstall. It just sits in there like that. All I do is just take a 15 mil socket over top of it, a dead blow. And then it pops right in. It's like super easy. So, now when you're reinstalling the um, pressure relief valve, you want to put just a dab of oil on it. You don't have to put lots. Just, just so there's a little bit of lube on it. Like I said, lube is always your friend. Um, there is an O-ring on this. I already put a new one on it, but you do want to put a new O-ring on the nut. Um, if the O-ring looks okay, okay, I guess you could reuse it, but I, I would recommend replacing it but completely up to you. Now there is gonna be a bunch of tension there, so depending on how you want to install it, you can then just hold it, you can do it while it's on the engine if you want. It's up to you. So. Now, that being said, those two installed, put your oil, to do your oil cooler, swing over here now being this is on an engine stand this is pretty simple because you can just hold it like you can just put it like that as long as this surface is good as good and clean i don't know so i'm just going to scrape this surface a little bit because it's just not now that is uh something for you guys um you send something to a machine shop um, if you're the installer, there's sometimes going to be like little stuff that gets missed, a little gasket surface that's not perfect, um, you know, because it, honestly, attention to detail when assembling an engine, honestly, is the assembler's job. So... Because if the guy that was cleaning and everything got everything absolutely perfect, you would pay an arm and a leg every time you brought something into the machine shop. Because it takes time, time is money. Everybody, you know, unless you're, unless you're paying them to, to make everything spotless, but you know, if you want, you know, all of the surfaces to be perfectly spotless, everything to be perfectly clean, the final cleaning already done. Um, you're talking like probably an extra two and a half to four hours, depending on how dirty the block is. So you want to take that into an account. So. So what I've done is I've coated the gaskets and this is the gaskets that came with the oil filter or the uh, oil cooler, which I actually do like these ones. 
But what I do is I put a little bit of high tack on them. Um, and there's all kinds of different brands of this. Just a gasket tack, basically a spray gasket tack. And I find that that helps the system seal. The gasket will stay there better. Everything's good. So oil cooler, new oil cooler. Um, I recommend anytime that you're rebuilding an engine, I don't care what kind of engine it is, if it has an oil cooler, it should be replaced. Now we're going to just high tack these up in a couple little spots here. So we didn't miss any. And then put your other plate on. Like I said, none of this stuff is really rocket science. It's nuts and bolts. Uh, for me, anyway, I, I guess maybe not everybody, but um, for me, it's nuts and bolts at this point. And depending on how, you know, like there again, depending on how absolutely perfect you want everything. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to spend yourself more time cleaning stuff. You will spend hours and hours cleaning stuff if you want everything to be absolutely perfect and that's fine if that's what you're after it's just you know taking into consideration you know an hour is an hour to clean stuff is an hour of shop time so if you're taking it to somebody to have it done that potentially could be depending on where you are um, could be a few bucks, right? Like, you know, if the guys are, if guys are charging, I don't know what, you know, what everybody's labor rate is, but for us, it's 125 bucks an hour. So that's potentially, you know, there again, if you're spending time. So, you know, if you guys want stuff super clean, I, I honestly would recommend doing it yourself. If you're gonna sandblast this, you, what you can, uh, make sure everything is stripped out of it. Um, and I wouldn't blast the mating surface um, if you can help it. Unless you're using a glass bead or something like that, then it's okay. But I, I just, I prefer not to blast that machine surfaces if you can help it. So your next step is gonna be Loctite. Um, this green Loctite, which is retaining compound, actually, and we use it for putting valve seats in, sleeves, all kinds of stuff like that. It's very similar to blue Loctite um, in a lot of senses, so we use it on all kinds of stuff. Um, just, you know, we got a couple big jugs of it around. I Loctite pretty much everything. Um, torque Loctite, and we never have to worry about it. It ain't moving. So myself, personally, anyway. And I'm a couple bolts short here. I just was, I grabbed some out of the bin just so I could do the video here. I'll have to clean in. I, I went through, I went through and um, just wire wheeled these so they're cleaned up. So cleaned up and well, with brake clean and everything. So <clears throat> now if you are doing this, like let's, let's say you're doing this on truck, um, you're going to, you're going to be you're going to be um, you have you're going to have to empty your coolant out because that oil cooler you know for guys that are going to be doing this while it's on the truck and I'm going to have to find a couple more bolts one two three All right, got the last two pieces of the puzzle here. Get these buggers in. I said, I lost eight everything, torque everything. So on these ones, um, I do 29 foot pounds. It's actually a little bit more than it calls for. But that's what I do on them. So when you're doing it, I just work my way. I start kind of in the middle. 
and work my way around and then I'll go around it a couple times um, just because they do these things honestly really like to leak so that's the reason for doing <clears throat> I guess all the extra measures by high tack and all that stuff right so Like I said, just make sure you're changing that stuff inside there because if you don't change that, the bypass valve, um, they have been known to give you a low oil pressure symptom, I guess you would say, um, and you don't really have, there's nothing wrong. So it's a good idea to change it in my eyes. So we're now to the point We're now to the point where um, we're gonna be getting, we're gonna be putting pistons in um, pretty soon. So as soon as I get the pistons, obviously, being that I I brake cleaned the the engine block down before we put the crankshaft in, um, I just like to give the cylinders a wipe with something that's not going to allow to rust. So um, this is just WD-40 in a spray bottle basically you just give the clean rag wipe the cylinders down um, something I guess I should mention um, I always brake clean the, the blocks down really well like I'll use at least like one of these um, filled with brake clean and I'll hose it and blow it off and hose it and blow it off and then I still wipe everything down with WD-40 afterwards, um, just because it's just a good protectant, right? Um, and it's a lot easier to, you know, break clean a little bit than to try to clean rust and deal with rust symptoms. Um, there again, in my eyes anyway. So, all right. So now we got that protected. We're just gonna put a bag over top of it. And uh, that's gonna conclude it for tonight. Um, I think what we're going to do uh, tomorrow, um, as I'm waiting for the pistons to show up and the gasket set still to show up, um, we'll see, maybe we'll do, as long as the seat and guide machine is free, um, we'll start, maybe we'll put the, maybe put the front timing case on. I can't put the camshaft in yet because I don't have the camshaft for this. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do a stage one camshaft in it, but we'll see. I'm not decided. I do have a really good used one that I could put in it. Um, that we just polished um, and it's perfect so we might just use that one maybe um, but we'll get after doing some head stuff um, and then and then soon as the rest of the parts come in um, we can uh, start getting after getting the rest of this thing together so all right guys um, we'll catch you tomorrow